Well, hello. Uh, today we've got a pigeon race from Tikawiti to Auckland. It's across 118 kilometres and it was raced on the uh, 7th of April. Beautiful day across the country for the race. Uh, just a little bit of cloud cover uh, over the east coast there, but uh, the uh, weather over the uh, race course itself was uh, southeasterly uh, at the release point and uh, then it became southwest by the looks of things. Uh, as the birds uh, travelled further north. The uh, rain radar is on the right there, there's no significant returns at all. The races today we've got, uh, just like Dad, uh, trainer Richard Couchman flying for Don Campbell. Uh, Red Rose in slot 3, uh, Red Rose trainer is Theo Van Leer and uh, Red Rose. We had some problems with uh, her data stream. Uh, the data stream was badly corrupted uh, in the first half of the race, but uh, the stream became uh, usable in the second half of the race. So we've elected to continue with it, uh, but it will give some unusual, an unusual look to her track uh, as she journeys north. But uh, bear with us, the, uh, the data stream does come right in the second half. Uh, of the race and certainly for uh, as the uh, birds cross the finishing line. And uh, slot 5 we've got Beethoven trained by Louis Morales. Slot 7 Paddy by myself Carl Coker and uh, Carp DM uh, rounds out the group there uh, trained by Kevin Malone. Um, so here's a video of the uh, the release point at Tikawiti, beautiful um, Waikato town there Tikawiti. Uh, a little bit of fair weather cumulus and uh, sunny day. Uh, birds just about to head off, and uh, it looks like the first one out there was, uh, I think that was Beethoven, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, the birds just heading off into the uh, the bright blue, um, into their uh, their race for us today. Um, so just taking a look. Uh, at the racing course, uh, there's Tikawiti there. Uh, the birds' uh, GPS trackers are, are just staying to show up. They're in the uh, the basket at present, uh, and just zooming out, uh, we can see that we're actually looking south. So uh, Lake Taupo is visible there. It's looking south over the uh, the North Island of New Zealand. Um, so they'll be racing. Uh, from uh, Tikawiti uh, up towards Auckland um, as they journey north. So just a couple of the highlights there. Um, so looking over the Waitomo Caves, uh, we've got the uh, Tahara Iron Sands on the right there. Prongia Forest Park obviously and uh, Kafi Harbour. Looking up towards Raglan. Um, and uh, the birds make their way up past uh, Glen Murray which was where we did our proof of concept race from and the finishing line there is uh, just crossing uh, the uh, Port Waikato um, Sunset Beach that sort of area. Um, so to the race uh, just get ourselves underway Um, so we're still looking south. Birds just in the basket at present. Um, they should be out of the basket very soon. Um, getting good uh, GPS tracks on. Uh, looks like just like Dad is sitting at the top of the stack there. Uh, Beethoven is in the orange, and uh, Red Rose is the red one underneath that. So the birds are off, all staying fairly closely to, close together as you'd expect initially. Uh, just like Dad's uh, taking its own course. And we've got uh, Carp DM the light green, uh, just circling back, just orientating a little bit before she gets underway. Paddy's headed off uh, in his own direction, looks like he's heading up the road. And we've got just like Dad, Beethoven and Red Rose uh, forming a little group there. Carp DM's just orientating uh, before she gets underway. Uh, these birds are heading more in a uh, northwesterly direction at the moment. So just having a look up the course there, the, uh, you can see the black uh, black top there of the road uh, that uh, Paddy's uh, clearly using that as a line feature for him. 
and then we have uh, this little peloton of birds here so there's the three just like dad red rose and uh, beethoven carp dm's currently orientating uh, still in tikawiti uh, i'm sure she'll be underway very very soon uh, just uh, looking down there towards uh, mount egmont and I just so you can orientate yourselves a little bit to what the, what the birds are actually doing. That's looking more north across the track they're flying at the moment. Uh, so coming up to the Waitomo Caves there. Uh, looks like Paddy's made a bit of a break for it eh? over on the uh, to the uh, east of the uh, of the track today. Uh, these three far more experienced race birds. Uh, having a, a good old uh, time of it themselves. Just settling into their groove. Uh, so Paddy's coming up towards Perongia there. Carp DM's um, just heading off also. Looks like Carp DM is uh, taking a more westerly route uh, than the other birds. Um, but she is underway. So just like Dad, Beethoven and uh, Red Rose forming our, our main group of birds here. Alright, uh, so that's looking up towards Raglan at the moment. And uh, yeah, Paddy's sitting off to the west as we uh, watch the birds coming up the country. So fairly rugged terrain through here. Um, clearly that was the uh, issue that we had as far as satellite reception uh, for getting a good data stream off Red Rose, which is why uh, it appears to be doing some aerobatics at the moment. Solid data there from just like Dad and uh, Beethoven. So, as far as the birds actually navigate, um, they've got uh, an extra cone in their eyes or another cone, so four cones uh, or groups of cones in their eye for picking up colour sense. Um, they uh, don't just see the uh, the three cones that a human has, um, which will need to think back to my uh, to my um, biology. But uh, I think it's uh, red, blue, and yellow the cones that they have. I could be wrong with that. Um, the pigeons have got a, a fourth cone in their eyes uh, in terms of getting a colour spectrum as they look around, so they can see into the ultraviolet, into the infrared. So they're able to um, pick up some of the uh, um, uh, the magnetic uh, distortion that you have of sunlight as it comes uh, into the atmosphere itself. So you get waves of sunlight actually appearing to the pigeon's eye. So they can actually see a, a north-south wave which they use to orientate themselves um, if they don't know the route. These birds are experienced birds, and have actually um, uh, either flown the group, uh, flown the route before, or they're flying with birds that have, and uh, they uh, will flock um, as a, uh, a natural uh, instinct anyway. So, uh, just having a look there, that red line you can see on the horizon is the uh, is the finishing position, and uh, this harbour here is uh, Tarawa Iron Sands just looking down at the sands themselves. Um, they have an all carrier which parks just off the coast there. Um, they pump a slurry of the iron sand out directly into the all carrier and then take it up to Asia. Um, so it's uh, uh, quite a uh, productive um, port area for New Zealand.
Market Stadium to see Raglan Harbour. There. Just in the north. So that's how the birds orientate north-south. As far as east-west goes, they uh, they tend to uh, uh, use the the uh, instincts that humans have for being jet lagged. So um, if you uh, ten o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock in the morning in New Zealand, and uh, you in the next instant found yourself instance found yourself in Australia, uh, you be pretty much in the dark and you'd realize you're in the wrong place uh, from a, a longitudinal aspect you'd have to move further to the um, east to get to your home time zone the birds can do that to uh, um, a degree of twen every 20 to 30 minutes they, uh, they are able to um, find their own uh, time zone for want, of, uh, for want of another way to put it so settling into our main group here, still staying together very tightly. Red Rose, just like Dad, and uh, Beethoven. There's Paddy way off to the uh, off to the east. And this group is making very good ground. Hugging fairly close to the um, west coast of the North Island there. Still sitting well off to the uh, to the east. Let's see if we can see what's happened to Count DM there. making out the green dot right in the distance there. So you have, uh, that's um, yeah, Taranaki just sitting on the, oh no that's not actually, that's Mount Ropehu and Narahoe sitting off there. Mount Taranaki is more off to the right there. well to the south just uh, making a late start um, as she orientated. Uh, Paddy sitting uh, there I can just see him off to the uh, east and then we've got our main group here. Coming up to the finish We've got quite a bit of ground to cover here of the 118 kilometres through to the finish point.
a slight bend is obviously quite comfortable to uh, take its own journey if it wants to but um, seems to get drawn back in with the flock so that's the Waikato River just coming into view the red line there is the finish uh, the birds are just zooming in there now very very hard to pick um, who's going to take this one out um, so we've got Paddy definitely off there uh, looks like that's a definite fourth for him and oh, just crossing the line there we've got a dead heat I think between uh, Red Rose and Beethoven just like Dad third, Paddy fourth and Carp DM fifth So that's Carp DM just making its way into the loft there. Uh, that was kindly supplied to us by Kevin Malone um, as uh, she made her way into the loft. Um, so we have the results for race two, Tickawiddy to Auckland placings. First equal for Red Rose and Beethoven. Um, so uh, the line honours there going to Theo and Louis, uh, both getting aggregated 10 points each. Uh, third, just like Dad, uh, Richard Couchman. Uh, fourth is Paddy. Fifth, Carp DM, uh, Kevin Malone, uh, is uh, rounding out uh, the five. Hope you've enjoyed the race, and uh, we'll see you again sometime soon.